Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. Today, we are looking at the Land Rover L322 headlamp, and I want to go a bit more deeper in my investigation. We initially did the investigation on that and found it seemed a bit normal. There was nothing uh, too surprising about it. Just going to make the effort of undoing this again because I know we're going to need to undo it. And what I'd like to do is get the actual xenon bulb out because I want to check the bulb, check the connectors, check the PCB because clearly this one's been running without a cover for a while. You can see the cover's missing ah, right here. Yeah, just, just do that. Let's just throw that on a bulb that probably cost 200 quid. Um, because what we want to do is, is try to just isolate what's wrong with this. It was doing a bit of flickery action and we thought it could be this and it may well be this. I haven't put it all back into the vehicle because there's a lot of uh, extra stuff that needs to go on. I've got the other light off, I've got other bits to repair, so I'm not going to chuck it back in the vehicle just yet. But what I want to do is make sure I've got a decent test scenario to put it back. So ideally I'll probably try to remove this lamp unit, make sure it's clean anyway, um, and swap it with the one in the other side and then put everything back the same just apart from the lamp which has its own integrated ballast at least that way we can isolate if it's the uh, lamp or not in fact I'm talking a bit bit rubbish there's another third thing it could be because you can see the lamp itself and the ballast are two separate so uh, uh, yeah you know you can see there's some variables here but let's just try to do it one step at a time so I would I, I would probably swap the ballasts over and see if that makes a difference and if that doesn't make a difference then I would probably swap uh, the lamps so I think I could pr probably do that from within the vehicle. Just checking here. There's basically some screws here. We, we'll discover whether or not that's practical as we dismantle this. Anyway, it does appear to have these clips that are sort of dotted all around. So I can only assume that those are the ones we will need to undo because there's pretty much nothing else uh, do, holding this. So the big, this black cover here seems to be almost like an additional cover that's over all of the internals of this unit. He hopes. Um, so let's see if that is the case. If not, it could be a lot of fun and games getting in there. But I, you know, I assume that when you buy these cars, if your bulb goes, they don't send you a whole sort of headlamp cluster thing. So there's another three on the bottom. So there's two on one on each side basically, two there, uh, three on the top, three on the bottom, I think I've caught them all. Quite easy, just get your screwdriver in the end like that and just lever it off and that just opens the clip. No idea we're going to put them back though, that's going to be a little bit more interesting. It's going to make sure I don't break this, is the headlamp windscreen wiper trim. It does feel like a something that would easily break. I just held on with a few clips. There we go, that does come off quite easily. So here we are, the business end. So I can hear it's got like a huge seal as you'd expect going on around it. Ooh. Oh cri crikey. Careful of the seal, I've just obviously kind of pulled that one off on that side. It's a big piece of glass. It's basically a Pyrex dining tray. That's that's what vibe it gives you when you take it off. Would you like to cook some cookies? Yes, please. Yes, please, Mum. <sighs> just I'm blowing. It's it's got like spiders' webs and filth on there, and I don't want it to go in these sort of reflectory things. Don't want to touch any of that. Okay, so I'm just, just levered my fingers under the edge and this obviously just popped up. That, that was quite nice. That was a, a freebie surprise there. Put it aside and be very careful of that. You don't want to mess that up. That'll ruin your whole light if you do. Hmm, nice, nice, nice. Getting a bit further in now. I'm not sure how these are connected. So be a bit ginger. Wait for me to break mine. I flip this over. It's a lot lighter now, though. Oh, yeah. out come the spiders. Looking in here, I'm just sort of looking through to see if I can see how that reflector's connected. Incidentally, if you've got a spare one of these covers, 
I would love love one of those. Just let me know. I would buy that off you. I need one of those. So this is where that connector goes for our module. It's got a nice look, ferrite choke there. Not still not figured it out. What's going on? It seems to be something to do with this here. These which are adjusters, so they might be holding the whole thing in. There is something here. What's this? What's this guy? Looks like a sort of drain plug thing. This connector looks like it rotates. It does. Let me get rid of that. Let's pop the drain plug back in. Not sure about this one. Whoa! Crikey. Some clips holding that on. Be a bit careful of those. Bet they're almost impossible to buy. What does that do? So these are the headlight um, adjusters. These sort of do the uh, pivoting of the light, and I think these are preset to something useful and sensible. So seeing if there's a good way of one not messing with them or two actually just marking this out let's get in there if I can lever this part of this I, it kind of feels like this is our ball joint in here which probably can be separated just try that first again be a bit ginger one less thing to repair might jump right reading up on this apparently I'm going way deep I'm going into a deep zone where there's less people messing around with the parts I'm messing around apparently you can actually just change the bulb alone oh there it is so for those of you interested that's the bulb and that's how you change that so yeah that's fine changing the bulb apparently is not a problem so changing the igniter though which is the bit I've got here in my hand is so I think I'm just going to continue I've, I've kind of come this far we want to just keep having a go, don't we? And I have a bit danger of putting all my headlights and stuff out of alignment with my next stage because I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, so I'm going to try to just unscrew these two uh, pivots. So just to make sure I don't lose my way, I'm going to try to show you if I may. There's a bracket thing in here. You'll see it just down there, this white thing. I'm just going to put a score where it meets this white plastic of this tube because when I unscrew it, that white thing is going to pop out front ways and my score will be the only thing that will tell me how far in it was because that's what I'm going to have to try to achieve when I uh, reassemble it. So I'm just going to take this knife and put a score in there and it feels it's really biting in so I'm hoping I'll be able to see that. I can kind of see that and it's going to be a bit tricky but I've kind of got to do it for this other one that's in here and that's one that you're probably not going to be able to even see and I can't actually I cannot even get in there um, let me just see if that's even feasible uh, hmm, hmm. that side is going to be a little bit a little bit trickier let's see if there's another way we can see that this is these are like these plastic doohickeys are sort of sitting in and they get they're in at a certain depth so maybe you can just slide a tape measure or something in and, and make a little a little mark. I'm gonna I'm gonna experiment with that and I'll let you know what I did. Okay, sussed it. You don't need to mark it or anything. Look, there's three clips actually holding these things. If you remember, we pulled out some sort of cl main clippy thing earlier, which is just an adjuster for that. But get rid of that. And there's three tags. If you take the tags out, it looks like it's just gonna drop straight down. So problem is there there's three of them so you've got to kind of be a bit dexterous but there that's the three done on that side and the three done on that side so it does look like it's just pivoting let's pop that back in pivoting on those push those through let's see what that does you can see I've put something soft down on the bench because it seems to be really super easy to scratch that reflector material and you don't really want to do that um, just one last sort of pivot thing in here it seems to be hooked on 
I'm not sure yet if it will just kind of try to release itself. But you can see when I push down, it's pushing that back up. They're, they're pivoting on that same point. I'm going to go the kind of the bit of gentle pressure and see what happens. Mm, no, gentle pressure is not working out for us. The annoying thing is I can see what it is. It's like a ball joint on a... It's, it's, it's clearly it, it's clearly a ball joint that just needs to be separated, basically. But that's the bit I'm worried about. You can just sort of snap it. And it's the hardest thing to show you than if it goes right. If it goes wrong, then that's fine. You don't have to copy. Uh, I don't like pushing on this. It's the pushing on the connector. Oh. Ha ha ho. You heard something happen. For good or for bad, whatever it is, has happened now. Oh, no, I'm stuck. My uh, This one sort of needs to be freed again. And I'll tell you exactly what I did. So inside there, there is a, a white ball joint and we're going to, we're going to, we'll see, be seeing that now. And actually these, all these adjusters are sort of hooked on in the same way to these ball joints. Um, whether or not you can do that all through, I don't know. I think we've gone the safest way. So be careful with the lid, the reflectors, all of this stuff. It's all flimsy. But there we go. We're that way now. You can see it. There's the ball joint right there. So that's what I've pulled off. And I'll show you the other end in a moment, which is here. Actually, you can see that right there. There's the other end. It just sort of slips in. And you, they're using them in the other adjusters up here as well. So they do have three of them. If you can find a way of splitting them, you could probably just pull it out straight off. But... Uh, there is a lock actually, yeah, you can see there is a lock on these. If you push in at the front, that will release a catch that would release that. Probably a bit easier than uh, what I had to do just then. So this is the main unit though, the igniter. That's the one that we've been sort of searching for. Let's take that out. And now we're really, we are really uh, humming along here. Just looking at how the igniter works, there's three wires here. I think must be giving it its power and whatnot, and uh, that's being controlled by this sort of control unit. So imagine all of this control unit may well just be th the computer box from the car telling it to turn on and off the bloody lights. Seems a lot of effort. Still, that's fine. In terms of condition, by the way, the inter interior of this light is really good. It's just clean. It's clearly pretty much maintained a decent seal. I mean, there's a bit of dust in here, but I suspect it's because somebody forgot that back cover. If you keep the back cover on it, I suspect many, many years of nice, clean unit. And that's it. I think that is how we change the ballast. So this bit here, we can unplug there, of course. It's a little Molexy thing, it'll only go on one way. So this bit is the bit, this isn't a ballast, I don't think. This is just a uh, computer control power supply type box. But this bit here, this is the igniter part. And I'm just going to give it a wipe down so we can see if there's any labels on it. Because this is the part you could replace. It does look a bit fat here, but I think that's that's in the potting. It's not flexible potting. Yeah, I think that's just how it is. And that's the uh, information on there. So you might be able to just get one of these on their own. Focus! What is up with Mr. Camera today? Doesn't want to focus. Anyway. You can see there's some sort of German stuff in there. There's a part number 1307, 329, and there's an 059 stamped on it. Two kilo, kil, kilo hours, 1kh, whatever that means. 35 watts, 85 volts AC, maximum 0.25 kilovolts. Whatever, whatever. And it's got this little standard scrawny type terminal block. Brilliant. So I think just swap that out and assembly is the reverse of what we did. Now while we're here, I'll put that down and we'll just have a quick look at this whole reflectory part. 
Um, again, be a bit careful with it. I kind of scratched up some of that, <laughs> putting it on the rough work surface. I mean, it's not a big deal, but you might want to keep it pretty. Uh, I'm just checking it out because I, I kind of pulled this connector out earlier and I looks like I just damaged the PCB a little bit, but actually that's okay. I could arrow dye that, but I don't think I will. That's going to be fine. Um, this is the assembly where the bulb sits. The bulb itself is looking pretty good. Um, actually, there does seem to be a, a layer of deposited funk in there. I think that's the... Maybe the bulb is suspect. Focus! Damn it! So I could have got away with maybe just trying the uh, the bulb. But yeah, there's a bit of uh, a bit of something in there. I'm going to compare that to the uh, other side, and we'll have a look. See see if you know that could be an issue. Just make sure you pop that in the right way, though. I don't want to damage that. Get on. Clearly, I'm having trouble with this. Oh. Uh, let's forget that for now. And uh, that's your pivot thing here. And this is one of another, another one of those ball joints. So let's see if you could, actually, if you can get to it from the top. Let's see how difficult it is to release. So there's a release mechanism here. Um, yeah, I tell you what, it's still going to be tri bloody tricky, very tricky. But you'd have to sort of push something in there and try to spring that back. I think just use this same method we just used, just by sliding the whole assembly out. At least when you put it all back in, it should all align up the same way. I hope that's been of some use to you. Please uh, like, share, subscribe, and uh, you know, keep enjoying your vehicle and not worry about doing these things and just work on it and uh, save yourself hundreds upon hundreds of pounds uh, by just being a bit interested in your own equipment and sorting it out yourself. As ever, thanks for watching.